If you think you're going to pencil with me to death like you did to Mass Sergeant Beach, you have another fucking thing coming. Because we're no longer in the fucking National Guard. We're in the fucking regular army. And we're in a war zone. And you're in my fucking backyard. And here I will fuck you up. Hello everybody, Terrence Pop here. With another episode of the Eye from the Lair. <clears throat> Uh, so where we left off, we're in the late 90s, early 2000s, Company F425. I got a bunch of side stories that took that took place after this time frame, but it's kind of relevant that I, I talk about them here. The first sergeant we had, you know, uh, we, we used to call him Charlie Brown. He was a sort of wrinkled up fucking booger of a guy, backstabber, fucking shifty, just untrustworthy motherfucker. All right, it just, he couldn't take his word for anything. Uh, and he had been in that unit since he was an E1. So he went from E1 to E8 in the same unit, which is a huge fucking no-go. Because you don't learn how the fucking real military works. You only learn how that one little, you know, button of a unit that you're in, which is makes up the whole tapestry of the army. Uh, and there's you know some wisdom in the fact that the army moves NCOs around so they get a, a you know a wider base of experiences to make decisions against well um, I had gotten trouble I got a negative counseling I got slapped on the wrist for you know they, they said I was inciting a riot or a mutiny which I wasn't I was actually putting one down because people were fucking royally pissed and uh, you know I got a fucking nasty gram. And uh, the following year, I got another NCOER, which was mediocre at best and had a couple negative bullets on there. And, uh, but lo and behold, you know, apparently uh, there was another E8 there who was in the op slot and him and the first sergeant didn't get along, even though they have known each other for a decade and a half or some shit like that, I don't know. Uh, uh, I think he just retired, or he's a sergeant major now. He deserves it. He's a good guy. Um, hopefully he doesn't get mad, but uh, his last name was Beach. And, uh, you know, I watched what uh, old Charlie Brown was doing to Beach, and he would follow him around and pencil whipped this other E8 to death over this stupid fucking bullshit. You know, just un and, and give him fucking missions that there's no way he could succeed, and then just slam him for it. I mean, it, to be honest with you, it was unprofessional, it was cowardice, uh, and it was it was not it was not moral at all to do. I mean, you, you don't do that to people, I and mean, that's just fucked up. Especially combat units where you guys possibly could go to war one day. You know, you don't want to go downrange with grudges like that. It's not good. You know, worse come to worse, and actually he built up a, uh, a big enough case against uh, Mass Arm Beach. Beach said, fuck it, I'm out of here. Went on to go do something else in another unit where he, I heard he kicked ass and took names because, you know, he's, he's a good NCO. So uh, I got the, uh, the nod, they're going to make me the E8, you know, Mr., uh, you know, <laughs> I don't know what the fuck they were thinking. You know, if they thought I was gonna just bend over and, you know, jump on my knees and start kissing ass and sucking dick, I don't do that, ever, for nobody, you know? So I'm like, okay, well, they sent me to, uh, <clears throat> what was it? I finished ANOC phase one uh, about a year prior to that, and I was just just eligible for E8, and uh, I, got, I picked up E8, so I became the Ops NCO IC. Which, you know, was pretty good. You know, we had an E7 in there who had some had a health issue and couldn't get promoted. Uh, but he knew that job like the back of his hand. And, you know, in my opinion, he, he did a great job. You know, granted some mistakes were made, but everyone makes mistakes. Nobody died. You know, it is what it is. So, you know, we're going to fast forward here into 2004. I'm in Iraq. Now, I had been relieved for being the ops NCO IC because I refused to falsify RTEPs 
And for those of you who don't know what that is, an RTIP is basically, it's a written grade of your performance on specific military tasks that pertain to your job. And uh, I, I, wouldn't, I was gonna do it because the commander wanted to get us, you know, out of the MOB site to skip over Kuwait and go directly into Iraq without covering, you know, the basic skills and, you know, the tasks that required as per the U.S. Army Stract Manual. Okay, the Stract Manual is a simple uh, book and it, it goes by jobs and it tells you what tasks you have to do to prepare for, you know, for deployment, how many rounds of this you have to fire, uh, grenades, anti-tank missiles, you know, the whole deal. I mean, it's, it's, quite, it's quite rigorous. So the commander, Worthless, basically stated that you know, we had done all this and we had RTEPs to prove it. So I come to the ops meeting and everyone's filling out these fucking RTEPs and I'm like, what are you doing? And they're like, oh, we gotta fill these out. And I'm like, people are gonna fucking die. This is the real fucking deal. You guys don't know what the fuck you're talking about. I've been to war, you haven't, and I'm not doing this. Next morning, I was relieved for cause, which is fine. So, you know, we get to Iraq and uh, having a triple tabbed E8 walking around in a Speedo, flip flops and a fucking flak vest, uh, you know, going to the shitter a couple times a day and just watch movies started to attract a lot of attention. So old Charlie Brown decides he's gonna make me Sergeant of the Guard, which is an E5 position. I don't care, you know, I'm like, whatever, I'll do whatever it takes. So I go through, I get with the other sergeant of the guard, we do the handoff, I'm putting in the guards on the particular day, and uh, we had to pull uh, their tripod out of the tower because it had a serial number on it which matched the weapon, which was their weapon, so we couldn't swap it out. So we had to actually unbolt theirs and it took an extra 35 minutes. You know, I, I get everyone in place, and I, and I get a call on the super secret school radio, which is just an unsecured FM little talk about, from the old man NCO that we had an issue with a couple years prior to that. And he tells me, hey, you better watch your shit, you know, old Charlie Brown is sniffing around behind you and he's gonna pencil whip you to death. Well, I'm like, okay, that's fine. Well, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not sweating it. I'm in a fucking combat zone. I've already been relieved for cause. I'm not playing these fucking silly games. So I roll right up on him in my Humvee and like you and me in the command off commander's office right fucking now. So he comes in there and I get right into his face, like literally like in his fucking face. And I say the following. I said, listen here, you short, squat, ugly motherfucker. All right. If you think you're going to pencil with me to death like you did to Mass Sergeant Beach, you have another fucking thing coming because we're no longer in the fucking National Guard. We're in the fucking regular army and we're in a war zone and you're in my fucking backyard and here I will fuck you up. And I told him, don't ever fucking speak to me again. If you do, I'll push your goddamn face in. The only one who talks to me is the commander. Get out of my fucking face. And he was gone. He was mad as shit, but what could he do? You can't fucking take me in hand-to-hand -hand combat. He can't fucking go against me administratively. He was a fucking fleeb. And, and the men hated him because his only answer to problems was suck it up. That works the National Guard when you have two weeks in AT. I mean, any, any infantry grunt can stand on his head in a bucket of shit for two fucking weeks, okay? And, it'll, and you know it's gonna be over. But a year, a year in Iraq, that was a long fucking time because Every day was a week, and every week a fucking year. I mean, it, the, the time just went by so fucking slow. But anyway, you know, a couple months later, he got relieved for cause and kicked, he got sent home in shame from Iraq, but I'll get to that later when I get to the deployment stories. Now I wanna cover a couple of re, uh, rehabilitations I did while I was there in the 425. I had a Puerto Rican soldier, not gonna say his name, but his, his uh, call sign was Chupacabra. Great guy, loved him to death. You know, he would do anything for you. You know, he never fell out. He always qualified. You know, he, he spoke his mind. He would talk the proper amount of shit. He had good ideas. I mean, just an all around fucking solid fucking troop. Well, you know, we started having some issues. Uh, you know, we went to Alpina. We had a great paintball fucking uh, training session. 
which was I think all day long was great. And then we finished up there and we went back for the last three days down to uh, Selfridge. And um, he, he, he ducked out early, you know, he just left. Didn't tell, didn't tell the chain of command, nothing, just fucking, you know. And then uh, a couple drills after that, he would come late, he would be all fucked up. So, you know, what does Charlie Brown do? Charlie Brown fucking calls me up to say we're, we're getting rid of fucking uh, Chupacabra until he gets his, his shit unfucked and then he can come back. I'm like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, this was back when I was a platoon sergeant. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, wait a minute. He's my guy. You know, I didn't recommend him to be fucking, to do anything. You know, could you at least give me the fucking, you know, courtesy to, you know, unfuck my own troops before you start putting your fucking hands on my guys? He's like, fine. So I'm like, okay. So I sit him down and I say, hey, you know, this isn't on paper. I'm not putting shit on paper. And I ask him, I'm like, what the fuck is the deal? You know, you left drill. He, and, well, it turns out that his, his wife and his mother were fucking, you know, banging heads and not getting along. It was causing all kinds of inner turmoil. And on that particular day when he took off, his mother took off with, with his kids and caused the big fucking hootie do. And on top of that, he worked uh, for the, the Bureau of Prisons, you know, here in Michigan. You know, he was a prison guard. And uh, he had a supervisor at work who was not allowing him to have his days off to go to drill. All right, so he was burning vacation days just to come in to drill. And a couple of the drills that he had to miss, he, he, he couldn't get it off. He didn't have any more vac vacation time to burn. And they were starting to give him bad time because he was missing. It was looking really bad for him. So he tells me that, and I'm like, wait a minute. I'm like, wait a minute. This is a state-run institution. They're supposed to give you the fucking time off, blah, blah, blah. And he says, well, I, I told the su supervisor that. And I'm like, all right, all right, I'm going to handle it. So I send him on his way. I uh, do a FOIA request up to Lansing. I get an actual copy of the budget. I find the, light I the line item budget for the actual institution that Chupacabra worked at. Write down the dollar amount. Then I go back into this, you know, the state laws in regards to National Guard duty and you know, employers, especially state-run employers, you know, give them, uh, I think they get so many days off uh, a, a year. I think it was like 16 or or 20, 21 days off excused for just military duty. I write that up. Then I, I get, uh, I write a letter to the warden. I write a letter to the governor, lieutenant governor, and the congressman and the senator of Michigan. All right, I write all five letters. I sign them. I put the line item number for the fucking, uh, uh, <clears throat> for their budget. I the state laws, I highlight all the shit. Then I put in a statement from the soldier in regards to what's going on and the name of the supervisor. And everyone that got mailed that, so got mailed all of the letters. So when I mailed it first class FedEx to the warden of the prison, he opened it, saw the letter, saw the statement from the soldier, saw the line item, saw you know everything, that the laws that were being violated, saw the, the fucking letter to the governor, lieutenant governor, senator, and congressman requesting that if this institution is gonna follow state law, then line item, I don't even remember what the number was, needs to be stricken from the record and there to get no more state funding nor federal funding. Let me tell you. So that went down. And uh, I didn't think anything of it. I basically forgot about it. So it's like three days later, I get a call from Chupacabra. He's like, he's like, Pop, man, what did you do? The warden just called me. Oh, my God. He's like freaking out. He thinks he's going to get fired. Well, it turns out he goes into work. Warden fucking gets the fucking deal. Relieves the supervisor back down to standard fucking grunt. He gets reassigned to a much better position. Gets all his vacation days back. Gets all of his fucking bad time rescinded and gets a week fucking off paid. Boom. And I wrote about it in my book, The War is the Way in the Soldier's Soul, that uh, if you want your men to truly respect you, you have to not be willing to throw them away. You have to give them the benefit of the doubt or at least try to fix the situation before you have to elevate it where other people need to get involved. 
It's basic fucking NCO fucking business 101. And sometimes you might have to, you know, take a guy behind the, the, the woodshed and whip some ass, dig holes, make him do stupid ass bullshit. Because everyone has a different learning curve. And sometimes that learning curve is pretty fucking steep. <laughs> all right, gentlemen, that's 15 minutes. I think that's all I got for today. You guys take it easy.